Hello all. Welcome back to the last part of video lecture series of 8. Now we are going to do the hands-on for Granger causality test. So first we will consider this um, air quality data set say this this comes with the basic data sets package and in the air it is if you look into the description of the data set it's new york air quality measurements so daily air quality measurements in new york uh, between may and september of 1973 so data it's a data frame uh, it has 153 observation on six variables ozone solar wind temperature month and day now we only focusing on temperature and ozone but you can try with the other variable as well so the first thing we are going to plot is uh, temperature uh, data set that's how like uh, temperature data set has this is the ozone data set as we have seen looks like there are some missing values are also there in the ozone time series so the first thing we are running here is uh, in from the LM test uh, the first model that we are trying to fit is the grandeur test where ozone is a function of temperature and with only lag 1 and if we run this and data is work air quality if we run this the p-value this is the if test run so the model 1 is ozone with lag 1 ozone and lag 1 temperature and then the second model is only the null model and then uh, it did a test whether the lag model has effect or not and then it says that okay the null model uh, is not right so that means temperature does have an effect on the ozone similarly we run the second model and in this ozone again as a function of temperature but now we are going up to the uh, second order of the Granger causal test model it's essentially autoregressive model essentially it's autoregressive model and p-value is still small so we can say that temperature does have effect on uh, on ozone so in order to understand a little bit more how this whole thing is working so we will take the air quality data n is the number of samples first what we are now if you look into the let us look into the air data so that's how the data looks like okay that's how the ozone solar solar dot r radiation wind solar dot r stands for radiation wind temperature month and day now there are some na observations are available so uh, it is always a bit difficult how you do this uh, you know imputation but for the time being we are not handling the missing data we are only going to use the data which is fully available to us but for the time being so we suppose we want to fit the first model uh, we create the lag data set okay so here we have created the lag so 41 was here we just created like 36 just brought it down by one then we created the lag 2 variable so now you have see the lag 2 variables have been created okay then similarly we create the temperature lag 1 and temperature lag 2 variables 
So temperature line one, temperature line two variable have been created. Now, if you fit the model with ozone lag one and temperature lag one, okay. Ozone lag one and temperature lag one, and similarly M one, say for null I will use zero, but just copy this entire thing. And but instead of temperature lag one, I'm dropping the temperature lag one. So I'm just saying the ozone is only function of its own. Okay. Now you see ANOVA. If you just run ANOVA between M one zero versus M one. Okay. You can see that it is. The if test reject the null hypothesis, and it says that the lag one temperature does have effect on ozone. So you can do the Granger causal test in this way as well. Similarly, this is M two. This test with the two uh, lag, and then I can define the model with null model here, but only with the lag uh, lag ozone not with the temperature i'm dropping the temperature and then we run the anova anova m test or f test 2 to comma m2 zero okay and you can see you can reject the f test so lag do have effect on the ozone now if i compute the aic of model 1 and model 2 clearly the model 1 has a more aic than the model 2 the model 2 has some lower mic aic so we can uh, we would prefer model 2 over the model 1 similarly you can go for the third uh, variable third lag we have to create a lag here so we can always create these lines first we have to create these lines so maybe lag 3 lag 3 4 3 so we have to create these lags uh, for ozone and then now we have to create this lags for temperature third lag yes, three and then what we need is mode for third lag and ozone plus three and so plus three and okay and the three not null we just ozone it will be only function of ozone and then we will see if it is still effective but now when we are doing third lag we are adding third lag it's not effective anymore uh, but can we choose m3 what is the aic of model third model now if you interestingly if you see what is happening you see what is happening here the aic is constantly dropping whereas model 
that means third model is probably better than the first and second model however uh, what we are seeing that third model the lag does not have any effect so that means uh, we cannot really use uh, we can't say that third lag has any effect on the the three lag model of uh, branger causal model does any effect any of temperature has no effect on the ozone so that means as we are putting as we are you know put more and more lags so naturally what is happening the model complexity increases and it's going to higher and higher dimension as model complexity increases it is doing some overfitting because my AIC is constantly going down but we know but most likely it is effectively uh, losing its interpretability and that's why probably it's not uh, running it's not giving any in, uh, effect but we though we know that you know lag 1 and lag 2 does have an effect so you can see that you know uh, you know very high m3 in case of third model except the lag 1 model does not have any effect whereas m2 if you see m2 lag 1 temperature does have an effect we see it, it does have an effect whereas the lag 2 does not have an effect also if you look into the standard error standard error in third model is 0 0.577 whereas in the second model for lag 1 is 0 0.50 so that means standard error is increasing so there is a high possibility that a multicollinearity also creeping in because of the multicollinearity these lags are not any more effective because their standard error is going up 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 because of the multicollinearity so you have to be very careful about uh, how you do the interpretation of these statistical inference and these you have to be very careful about these statistical inferences when particularly when you are adding more and more features just be, every time you are increasing lag that means your model is getting complex your um, complexity of your model is increasing it will have a higher tendency to overfit because end of the day your training data set is finite most of the time your data, training data set is not increasing so as a result your model will overfit and as it overfits you don't want your model to overfit because your bias will when it happens your bias will be small but you will have a very high variance in out of the sample it will not do very well so uh, you have to be very careful about model fitting when for adding more complex lag variable and it is better to obtain a parsimonious small model and just stop there okay uh, so far this week we will this is that's how uh, this much we will be discussing next week we will see you with a new video with a new chapter thank you very much take care